what's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand amputations and post-op treatments so you can better treat your amputees and also pass the NPTE. Typically, an amputation will occur as a result of really poor wound healing or an accident, and so you can have lots of different levels of amputations. In this video and series, we're only going to talk about really lower body amputations since that's what you'll see more frequently. A hemicorporectomy involves the pelvis and both legs. A hemipelvectomy is half of the pelvis and one leg. A hip disarticulation is removal of the femur and everything down, so basically one leg. These are really unlikely amputations, and these patients will probably never participate in gait just due to the high energy cost. The main amputations that you're going to see other than like a toe amputation every now and again are ones that are cut off around the knee. So you have an above knee amputation, also known as a transfemoral amputation. These patients will likely bear weight on their ilium and have a little bit more difficulty donning their prosthesis just because it's kind of an awkward angle. There are knee disarticulations. These patients will lose everything from the tibia downward. They will probably bear weight on their residual limb and they'll have a little bit more difficulty with gait because now the axis of the knee is going to be lower than it was previously. And then we have a below knee amputation, also known as a transtibial amputation, basically getting cut off mid tibia. These patients will also bear weight on their residual limb, usually at the patellar tendon. Looking closer to the foot, there is a Symes amputation, which is below the tibia and fibula, which can cause a bulbous residual limb. There's a transverse tarsal or show parts amputation where the foot is cut off at the tarsal bones and you lose the dorsiflexor muscles. And then there's the franc amputation where they cut just before the metatarsal bones. After their surgery, there are lots of different kinds of dressings going from non-weight bearing and rigid dressings where they can't really remove the dressing all the way down to like an ace wrap that'll just cover it. These provide various amounts of compression to help control edema. Some of these dressings can be removed more frequently for wound care and inspection, which is really important for some of your patients who may have diabetes or other reasons for poor wound healing. Another factor that's really important to look at early on is contracture prevention, especially if these patients are wearing some kind of rigid dressing where they can't bear weight and they really have to be in bed until those wounds are healed. These contractures can make it much more difficult to transition into gait later on. Most of these patients will have to wait for six to eight weeks until until those wounds are fully healed in order to start using their initial prosthesis. However, in some circumstances, they're able to use an IPOP or immediate post-op prosthesis so they can actually start walking pretty soon after the surgery occurs. Other concerns early on include DVTs, hypersensitivity, pain, and infection. Most of these can be helped just by medications like antibiotics and pain meds, but the hypersensitivity can become a bit more of an issue, especially when it leads to phantom limb pain. In order to combat this, you can, as a physical therapist, implement desensitization, modalities, prosthetic use, or mirror therapy, which are usually pretty successful. Once the patient's wounds are fully healed and they're cleared to start using their prosthesis, there are still going to be a lot of changes to the limb over the next year, uh, just with edema fluctuations, with atrophy happening in some of those muscles that no longer have a lower attachment, and things like that. So they'll end up wearing a shrinker for most of the day, especially if they're not using their prosthesis. They're going to get an initial prosthesis that's fit to them, but it's kind of big and kind of clunky and they have to work out some of the kinks. And usually it'll take six months up to a year to get the final prosthesis. At first, the prosthesis will be worn for about an hour a day with 30 minutes of walking in there and checking the residual limb every 30 minutes for signs of redness or irritation that the prosthetist can then help avoid in the future. If everything goes well, they'll increase about an hour every day, still checking their residual limb every 30 minutes for signs of irritation. Now it's time for or NPT Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. This is a big concern that can greatly affect gait when they're able to bear weight again. For anyone with above or below knee amputations, they should spend time in this position to prevent contractures. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy or drop me a comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.